भगवत गीता पर्व श्रीमद भगवत गीता दिस सेक्शन इज सो नेम्ड बिकॉज इट इंक्लूड्स द सॉन्ग सिलेस्टियल ओ द भगवत गीता द टीचिंग्स ऑफ कृष्ण टू अर्जुन द सेक्शन बिगिन्स विद द ड्रोमैटिक न्यूज दैट भीष्म हैज बीन किल्ड वेन संजय टेल्स धृतराष्ट्र दिस धृतराष्ट्र इज एस्टाउंडेड wishing to know how this came to be after a description of the arrangements for war the rest of this section is the bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavad gita chapter 1 dhritarashtra asked o sanjay having gathered on the holy plains of kurukshetra wanting to fight what did my sons and the sons of pandu do sanjay said at that time on seeing the pandav soldiers assembled in the battle formation king duryodhan went to the preceptor and spoke the following words o oh, preceptor Look at this great army of the Pandavas assembled in the battle formation by the son of Drupad. Yo talented student. Here there are courageous warriors with mighty bows, the equals of Bhim and Arjun in battle. Yuyudhan, Virat, Drupad and other Maharats Dhrishtaketu and Chikitan. The valiant king of Kashi, Purujit from the Kunti Bhoj clan and Shaib greatest among men the powerful yudhmanyu the brave uttamoja the son of subhadra the sons of draupadi all of them are maharathas o oh, best among brahmans now you should know the main warriors and leaders in my army for your knowledge i am naming them you yourself and bhishma and karn and kripa who wins battle ashwatthama and vikarn and the son of somdat there are many other brave warriors ready to give up their lives for my sake all of them are skilled in battle and they are armed with various weapons of attack me of us protected by bhishma is unlimited but this army of theirs protected by bhim is limited all of you occupy your respective positions at all the entry points to the army formation it is bhishma who must be protected creating happiness in his heart the powerful eldest of the kuru clan and the grandfather roared loudly like a lion and blew his conch shell then suddenly conch shell and kettle drums other kinds of drums and trumpets began to blare that sound became tremendous then seated in a great chariot to which white horses were harnessed madhava and pandava blew their divine conch shells rishikesh blew the conch shell named panchajanya and dhananjay blew the conch shell named devdat vrikodar whose deeds give rise to fear blew the giant conch shell named pondra king yudhishthir the son of kunti blew the conch shell named anant vijaya Nakul blew the conch shell named Sughosh and Sahadev blew the conch shell named Mani Pushpaka the king of Kashi with the great bow and the Maharatha Shikhandi Drisht Dumnya Virat and Satyaki who is never defeated Drupad the sons of Draupadi and the mighty armed son of Subhadra all of them blew their separate conch shells O oh lord of the earth that tremendous sound echoed in the sky and on the earth and pierced the hearts of those who were on the side of the sons of dhritarashtra then the son of pandu with the monkey on his banner saw the friends of dhritarashtra thus arranged in battle formation and got ready to use his weapons O oh lord of the earth he raised his bow and told rishikesh the following words O oh, Achyut Place my chariot in between the two armies while I look at those who are desirous of battle and are assembled here Let me see 
with whom I will have to fight in this war-related business, in a desire to do good to the evil-hearted son of Dhritarashtra, they have gathered here, desirous of fighting. I want to see them. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, thus spoken to by Gudakesha, Rishikesh placed that magnificent chariot between the two armies in front of Bhishma, Drona, and all the other rulers of the earth, and said, O Parth, look at those of the Kuru clan who are assembled here. They are parts of fathers and grandfathers, teachers and maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons and friends, father-in-law and well-wishers in those two assembled armies. Seeing them, all the friends and relatives assembled there, the son of Kunti was overcome with great pity and in sadness uttered the following words. O oh Krishna, having seen these relatives here, assembled with the desire to fight, my body is going numb and my mouth is going dry. My body is quivering and my body hair is standing up. My skin is burning and the Gandhav is slipping from my hands. Oh, Keshav, I cannot stand and my mind is in a whirl. The omens that I see are ill ones. I don't see any good that can come from killing one's relatives in a war. Oh, Krishna, I don't want victory. Nor do I want the kingdom or happiness. Oh, Govinda, what will we do with the kingdom? Or with pleasures? Or with life itself? Those for whose sake we want the kingdom and pleasures and happiness? They are gathered here in war, ready to give up their lives and their riches. Perceptors, fathers, sons and grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law and other relatives. Oh, Madhusudhan, I don't want to kill them, even if they kill me. Forget this earth, even for the kingdoms of three worlds. Oh, Janardhan, what pleasure will we derive from killing the sons of Dhritarashtra? Although they are assassins, sin alone will be our lot if we kill them. Therefore, we cannot kill the sons of Dhritarashtra with their friends. O oh, Madhav, how can we be happy after killing our relatives? Although their minds are befuddled with greed and they do not see the sin that comes from opposing friends or from destroying the family line. O oh, Janardhan, we can see the sin that comes from destroying the family line. Why should we not have the knowledge to refrain from committing this sin? When the lineage is destroyed, the traditional family dharma is also destroyed. When dharma is destroyed, evil overwhelms the entire lineage. O oh Krishna, when evil arises, the women of the family become corrupted. O oh, descendant of the Vrishnis, when the women are corrupted, hybrid castes are born. Hybrid castes ensure that the lineage and those who destroy the lineage both go to hell because their ancestors fall and are deprived of offerings of funeral cakes and drink. From those sins of those who destroy the lineage and from hybrid castes being generated, the ancient dharma of the castes and dharma of the family are both destroyed. O oh, Janardhan, if the family dharma is destroyed, those men are doomed to spend an eternity in hell. So we have heard. Alas, because of our greed for the kingdom and for happiness, we've got ready to kill our relatives. We are certain to commit a great sin. 
With me, unarmed and unresisting, if the sons of Dhritarashtra, with weapons in their hands, kill me in battle, that will be better for me. Saying this, in that battlefield, Arjuna sat down in his chariot. He threw away his bow and arrows, his mind overwhelmed with grief. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 2 Sanjay said, Seeing him thus overcome with pity, his eyes filled with tears and struck thus with grief, Madhusudan spoke the following words. The Lord said, O Arjun, from where, when we have this emergency, has this kind of weakness overcome you? This does not lead to heaven or fame and characterizes those who are not Aryas. O Partha, give up this weakness. This is not deserving of you. O one who scratches the foes, give up this petty weakness of heart. Arjun said, O Madhusudan, how will I use arrows to fight in this war against Bhishma and Drona? O slayer of enemies, they are deserving of worship. In this world, it is better to beg for arms than to kill one's respected preceptors. If I kill my elders, the wealth and other objects of desire that I enjoy will be drenched in their blood. I don't know which is better for us. They defeat us or we defeat them. The sons of Dhritarashtra are in front of me. Those are the people we don't want to kill in order to live. My normal nature has been overtaken by a sense of helplessness. Confused about what is dharma. I am asking you, tell me that which is decidedly best for me. I am your disciple. I have sought refuge in you. Instruct me. This grief is exploiting my senses and I don't see what will remedy that. Even if I win lordship over the gods or this earth without any enemies and prosperous. Sanjay said, Having said this to Rishikesh, Gudakesh, the scorcher of foes, told Govinda, I will not fight, and fell silent. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, to the person who was immersed in grief between the two armies, as if with a smile, Rishikesh spoke the following words. The Lord said, you speak as if you are wise, but you are grieving over those that one should not sorrow over. The wise don't sorrow over those who are dead or those who are alive. It is not the case that I or you or these kings did not exist before this, nor it is the case that we won't exist in the future. All of us will be there. The soul passes through childhood, youth and age in this body and likewise attains another body. The wise don't get bewildered by this. O oh, Kantya, because of contact between senses and objects, feelings of warmth and cold, pleasure and pain result. But these are temporary and are created and disappear. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, therefore tolerate these. O oh, best among men, the wise person who is not affected by these and who looks upon happiness and unhappiness equally, attains the right to immortality. That which is Untrue doesn't have an existence. That which is true has no destruction. 
but those who know the truth realize the ends of both these. But know that which pervades all of this is never destroyed. No one can destroy that which is without change. It has been said that all these bodies inhabited by the soul are capable of destruction. But the soul is eternal, incapable of destruction and incapable of being established through proof. Therefore, O oh descendant of the Bharata lineage, fight. He who knows this as a slayer, and he who thinks of this as something that is slain, both of them do not know. This is not a slayer, nor can it be slain. This is never born, nor does it ever die. This does not come into existence because it has been born. This has no birth. It is eternal and without destruction. It has no end. When the body is killed, this is not killed. O Partha, he who knows this to be without destruction, eternal, without birth and incapable of change, how can that person cause anyone to be slain? Or how can he slay anyone? Like a person discards worn-out clothes and accepts others that are new, like that, the soul discards worn-out bodies and attains other that are new. Weapons cannot cut this. Fire cannot burn this. Nor can water wet this. And the wind cannot dry this. This cannot be cut. This cannot be burnt. This cannot be wetted. And this cannot be dried. This is eternal and is everywhere. This is stable and does not move. This has no beginning. It has been said that this has no manifestation, that this cannot be thought of, and that this has no transformation. Therefore, knowing this to be like that, you should not grieve. O oh, mighty armed warrior, but if you think this to be subject to continual birth and continual death, even then you should not grieve for this, because death is inevitable for anyone who is born, and birth is inevitable for anyone who is dead. Therefore, because this is inevitable, you should not grieve. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, Beings are not manifest in the beginning. They are manifest in the middle and are not manifest again after death. What is there to sorrow over? Some people see this as a wonder. Like that, some others speak of this as a wonder. And some others hear of this as a wonder. But having heard, they are unable to understand this. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, in everyone's body, the Atma is indestructible. Therefore, you should not mourn about any being. Also considering your natural dharma, you should not waver. Because there is nothing better for a Kshatriya than a war, fought for the sake of dharma. O oh, Partha, this war has arrived on its own, like an open door to heaven. Happy are the Kshatriyas who obtain a war like this. But if you do not take part in this war, in the cause of Dharma, then you will forsake your natural Dharma and fame, and sin will occur to you. And all people will forever talk about your ill fame, for someone who is honored, dishonor is worse than death. These great warriors will think that you have withdrawn from the war because of your fear. And those who have so far respected you will lighten their opinion of you. Your enemies will say many things that should not be said and will criticize your prowess. 
Is anything more painful than that? If you are slain, you will attain heaven. If you win, you will enjoy the earth. O oh, Kontir, therefore arise, deciding certainly to fight. Therefore, get ready to fight, looking upon happiness and unhappiness, gain and loss, and victory and defeat equally. And sin will not touch you. In this, the possibility of effort coming to waste does not exist. Nor is there the chance of committing a sin. Even a little bit of this dharma protects from great fear. O oh, descendant of the Kuru lineage, this certain knowledge is unwavering. But for those who cannot focus, their wisdom is many branched and like the infinite. O oh, Parth, those who are ignorant say these flowery words, praising the Vedas and claiming there is nothing else. They are addicted to desire. Think of heaven as the supreme objective and are enamored of the fruits of birth and action. They praise many rites and rituals that lead to pleasure and wealth. They are addicted to pleasure and wealth. And because of those words, their minds are deluded. They cannot focus on one object, the intellect that allows one to discriminate. The Vedas deal with the three gunas. O oh Arjun, rise above the three guns. Without doubt, always resort to sattva. Do not be bothered about that what is yet to be attained, or preserving what has already been attained. Realize the Atma. Whatever purpose is achieved by many small bodies of water is also achieved by one large body of water. Like that, whatever all the Vedas achieve is achieved by a person who knows the Brahman. You have the right to action alone. You never have the right to the fruit. Do not be motivated to act because of the fruit. But don't be motivated to not acting either. O oh, Dhananjay, perform action by resorting to yoga. Give up attachment. Look upon success and failure equally. This equal attitude is known as yoga. O oh, Dhananjay, Action is far inferior to the yoga of wisdom. Seek refuge in this wisdom. Pitiable are those who crave after the fruit. He who has this wisdom discards good action and evil action in this life itself. Therefore, use yoga in what you do. Yoga is the skill of action. The learned who have this wisdom abandon the fruit of action and are freed from the fretters of birth. They certainly attain that place which is bereft of all blemishes. When your intellect transcends this maze of delusion, then you will attain indifference between that which has already been heard and that which is yet to be heard. Your mind is distracted at what you have heard. But when your intellect is unwavering and focused on Samadhi, then you will attain Yoga. Arjun asked, O oh Keshav, what are the signs of a person who has attained Samadhi and whose intellect doesn't waver? How does he speak? How does he sit? And how does he walk? The Lord said, O Parth, 
A person is said to be unwavering in intellect when he banishes all desires from his mind. He is content within his own Atma. He is not disturbed by unhappiness and he is beyond desiring happiness. He has overcome attachment, fear and anger and he is known as a sage who is unwavering in his intellect. In everything, he has no emotion, regardless of whether something pleasant or something unpleasant has been attained. He is not pleased, nor is he dissatisfied, and in him, wisdom is established. Like a tortoise, withdraws its limbs such a person withdraws his senses in every way from sensual objects. In him is wisdom established. Sensual objects are withdrawn from the body of a person who is starving himself, but not desire. In him, who has seen the Paramatma, even desire is restrained. O Kontya, even if a learned man takes care, the turbulent senses violently steal his mind. He who is devoted to me controls all those and focuses his mind on me. If a person can so control his senses, in him is wisdom established. If a man thinks about sensual objects, this gives birth to attachment about those. From attachment is created desire, and desire gives birth to anger. Anger gives birth to delusion, and delusion leads to confusion of memory. From confusion of memory comes loss of intellect, and loss of intellect results in destruction. But he who has controlled his mind is freed from attachment and hatred. Having used himself to control his senses, he uses these to enjoy objects and satisfy himself. When there is such serenity, in him is eliminated all unhappiness. Because in the mind of someone at peace, wisdom is quickly established. He who has no control has no intellect. He who has no control has no thought. Without thought, there is no peace. How can there be happiness for someone who has no peace? The wind rocks a boat on the water. Like that, the mind follows a sense devoted to objects and even a single sense robs him of wisdom. O oh, mighty armed one, therefore, he whose senses have been withdrawn from objects in every way, in him has wisdom been steadily established. When it is night to ordinary beings, the controlled person is awake then. When ordinary beings are awake, the sage perceives that as night. Just as the waters enter an ocean and leave the full ocean undisturbed, like that, all sensual objects enter that person, but leave him at peace. Unlike those attached to desire, a man who gives up all desire and exists without longing, without ego, or without a sense of ownership, he attains peace. O Parth, this is the state of being established in the Brahman. If one attains this, one is not deluded. Even at the end, established in this state, one attains union with the Brahman. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 3 Arjun said, O Janardhan, if in your opinion knowledge is superior to action, then why are you engaging me in this terrible action? 
These mixed words seem to be confounding my intellect. Tell me definitely that one thing that is best for me. The Lord said, O pure of heart, I have said it before that in this world there are two parts. There is Gyan Yoga for those who follow Shankhya and there is Karma Yoga for yogis. Without performing action, man is not freed from the bondage of action and resorting to sannyasa does not result in liberation. No one can ever exist, even for a short while, without performing action. Because the qualities of nature force everyone to perform action. The ignorant person who exists by controlling his organs of action, while his mind remembers the senses, is said to be deluded and is a hypocrite. O Arjun, but he who restrains the senses through his mind and starts the yoga of action with the organs of action, while remaining unattached, he is superior. Therefore, do the prescribed action, because action is superior to not performing action. And without action, even survival of the body is not possible. O Kontya, all action other than that for sacrifices shackles people to the bondage of action. Therefore, do action for that purpose without attachment. Earlier, Prajapati created beings accompanied by a sacrifice and said with this, May you increase and may this grant you all objects you desire. Through this, cherish the gods and those gods will cherish you. By cherishing each other, you will obtain that which is most desired. Because cherished by the sacrifice, the gods will give you all desired objects. He who enjoys these without giving them their share is certainly a thief. Righteous people who enjoy the leftovers of sacrifices are freed from all sins. But those sinners who cook only for themselves live on sin. Beings are created from food, and food is created from rain clouds. Rain clouds are created from sacrifices, and sacrifices are created from action. Know that action is created from the Vedas, and the Vedas are created from the Brahman. Therefore, the omnipresent Brahman is always present in sacrifices. In this way, the cycle goes on, and he who does not follow this is addicted to his senses and lives a sinner's life. O Parth, he lives in vain. But the man who takes pleasure in the Atma is content with the Atma and is satiated with the Atma, has no duties. In this world, he has no need for action nor anything to lose from inaction. He doesn't need the refuge of any being for anything. Therefore, be unattached and always perform prescribed action. Because a man who performs action when unattached attains the highest liberation. Janak and others attain liberation through action. One should perform action with an eye to preserving the worlds. Whatever a great man does, ordinary people also do that. Whatever he accepts as duty, others also follow that. O Parth, in the three worlds, I have no duties. There is nothing I haven't attained. There is nothing yet to be attained, yet I am engaged in action. O Parth, if I ever relax and stop performing action, then men will follow my path in every way. If I don't perform action, 
then all these worlds will be destroyed. I will be the Lord of hybrids and responsible for the destruction of these beings. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, ignorant people perform action by being attached to that action, but the wise perform similar action unattached for the welfare and preservation of the worlds. The wise will not befuddle the minds of the ignorant who are attached to action. Being knowledgeable, they will themselves perform all action and keep them engaged. All action is completed in every way through the qualities of nature. He who is deluded by the ego thinks that he is the doer. O oh, mighty armed one, but he won't truly knows the division of the qualities and different types of action. Knows that the quality manifests themselves in senses and does not get attached. Those who are deluded by nature's qualities are attached to action by senses and organs. The omni sense should not disturb those ignorant and misguided people. Focusing your mind on the Supreme Being, rest all action in me. Be without desire, without ownership, and without fever and fight. People who faithfully and without finding fault always follow this view of mine. They too are freed from the bondage of action. But know that those who in an attempt to find fault don't follow this view of mine. They have no sense and all their knowledge will be deluded and destroyed. Even a wise person acts according to his own nature. Nature drives all beings. Why should one use restraint for each sense in its respective area? Attachment and aversion are certain, but don't be overcome by those. They are obstacles. One's own dharma, even if followed imperfectly, is superior to someone else's dharma, even if followed perfectly. It is better to be slain while following one's own dharma. Someone else's dharma is tinged with fear. Arjun said, O oh, descendant of the Vrishni lineage, by whom are these men compelled? Despite being unwilling, it is almost as if they are forced into evil action. The Lord said, This is desire. This is anger. These are born from the Raja's quality. These are insatiable and great sins. Here, know them to be enemies, like smoke covers the fire, dust covers the mirror, like the womb covers the fetus. In that way, this is covered by that. O oh, Konthia, this is the perennial enemy of the wise. Knowledge is covered by this desire that is insatiable like the fire. All senses, the mind and intellect are its seat. This uses these to veil knowledge and delude beings. O oh, bull among the Bharata lineage, therefore you should first control your senses, destroy this, that is like sin and is the destroyer of knowledge. It is said that senses are superior. The mind is superior to the senses. Intellect is superior to the mind. That is superior to intellect. O oh, mighty armed one, in this way use intellect to realize that which is superior to the intellect. Use your inner strength to calm the Atma 
and destroy the enemy that is difficult to defeat in the form of desire. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 4 The Lord said, I instructed this eternal yoga to Vaiswat, and Vaiswat told it to Manu, Manu told it to Ikshvaku. In this way, handed down by tradition, the royal sages knew this. O scorcher of foes, in this world, because of the long passage of time, this yoga has been destroyed. You are my follower and friend. Therefore, today, I will tell you that old yoga, because this is excellent and secret knowledge. Arjun said, Your birth was later and Vaiswat's birth was earlier. How will I understand that you instructed this earlier? The Lord said, O oh Arjun, many are the births that you and I have been through. I know them all. O oh scorcher of foes, you know not. I have no birth. I am indestructible. I am the Lord of all beings. But even then, though existing in my own nature, I come into existence through my own resolution. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, whenever dharma goes into a decline and a dharma is on the ascendance, then I create myself to protect the righteous and to destroy the sinners and to establish dharma. I manifest myself from yuga to yuga. O oh, Arjun, he who thus knows the nature of my divine birth and action. He is not born again when he dies, but attains me. Many purified through the meditation of knowledge have immersed themselves in me and sought refuge in me, discarding attachment, fear and anger, O Parth. Whoever worships me, in whatever way, I entertain them in that way. Everywhere, men follow along my path. In this world, people who desire success in their action, worship gods. Because in the world of men, success through action occurs quickly. In accordance with gunas and action, the four Varnas were created by me. But despite being the creator of these, know me to be constant and not the agent. Actions do not touch me, nor do I desire the fruits of action. He who knows me in this fashion is not tied down by action. Knowing this, those who sought liberation in the past performed action. Therefore, you perform action alone, the path followed by predecessors in earlier times. Even the wise are confused about what is action and what is inaction. Therefore, I will tell you what action is. Knowing this, you will be freed from evil. Action itself has to be understood, and prohibited action must also be understood. Inaction must also be understood, because the path of action is difficult to comprehend. He who perceives inaction in action, and perceives action in inaction, he is wise among men, has yoga, and has the right to all action. He whose efforts are always devoid of desire for fruit and ego. He 
whose actions have been burnt by the fire of knowledge. The learned call him wise. He who has given up attachment to action and its fruit is always content and without refuge. Even when he is immersed in action, he does nothing. Without attachment, controlled in mind and senses, having discarded all ownership and performing action only through the body, he does not attain the bondage of sin. Satisfied with the unsought gains beyond opposites, bereft of envy and regarding success and failure equally, even if he performs action, he is not bound down. Beyond attachment, free and with the mind established in knowledge, when he performs action for a yajna alone, everything is destroyed. The receptacles used for offerings are the Brahmans. The oblations are the Brahman. In the fire, that is the Brahman. The offerer, who is the Brahman, performs the sacrifice. He who sees thus and is immersed in the Brahman in all action attains the Brahman alone as a destination. Other yogis perform divine yajnas. Others use the yajna as an offering to the fire that is the Brahman. Others offer senses like hearing as offerings to the fire that is self-control. Others offer sounds and other objects to the fire that is the senses. Others offer all action of the senses, an action of the breath of life as offerings to the fire of self-control lit up through knowledge. Some use the yajna of offering gifts. Others use the yajna of penance. Some use the yajna of yoga. And still others, firm in their resolve and careful, use the yajna of knowledge. Others offer the prana breath in the apana breath and the apana breath in the prana breath. Others restrain the flow of prana and apana breath and practice pranayama. Others control their food and offer the senses to the breath of life. All these, learned in the yajnas, become sinless through yajnas. The leftovers of sacrifices are like amrit, and those who partake of these attain the eternal Brahman. O oh, best of the Kuru lineage, those who don't perform yajnas have no existence in this world. Forget other worlds. Many yajnas of this type are prescribed in the Brahman's mouth. Know them all to be the outcome of action. Knowing this, you will attain liberation. O oh, scorcher of foes, a yajna performed with knowledge is superior to a yajna full of objects. O oh, Parth, all actions and their fruit end in knowledge. Attain that knowledge by prostrating, questioning and serving. The wise, those who are versed with the truth, will instruct you in wisdom. O oh, Pandav, knowing that, you will never fall prey to this kind of delusion again. Through this, you will see all the beings in your Atma and then in me. Even if you are a greater sinner than all the other sinners, you will cross all oceans of sin with the boat of knowledge alone. O oh, Arjun, like a raging fire burns to ashes pieces of wood, like that, the fire of knowledge burns all action to ashes. In this world, there is nothing as pure as knowledge. With the passage of time, he who is accomplished in yoga himself attains that within his heart. 
knowledge is attained by the faithful, the unwavering, and those who control their senses. Having attained knowledge, they quickly achieve supreme peace. The ignorant, the faithless, and the doubting are destroyed. For the doubting person, this world, other worlds, and happiness don't exist. O Dhananjay, he who has offered up all action through yoga, and he who has used knowledge to slice away doubt, actions cannot bind such a person who is focused on the Atman. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, therefore, use the sword of knowledge to slice away this doubt in your heart, resulting from your own ignorance. Follow yoga. Arise. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 5 Arjun said, O Krishna, you are asking me to give up all action and you are also asking me to practice yoga. Between these two, tell me decidedly which one is better. The Lord said, Renunciation and action both lead to liberation. But of these two, Karma Yoga is superior to renunciation of action. O oh, mighty armed one, he who does not desire and he who does not hate, know him to be a perpetual sannyasi. Freed from opposites, he is happily freed from bondage. The ignorant, not the wise, speak of renunciation and action as distinct. If one of these followed properly, the fruits of both result. Whatever place is attained by the followers of knowledge is also attained by those who practice action. He truly sees. Who sees renunciation and action as identical? O oh, mighty armed one, without action, renunciation is only the cause of unhappiness. The sage who uses yoga attains the Brahman quickly. He who practices yoga, he who is pure of heart, he who has controlled his body, he who has controlled his senses, he who sees his own Atma in the Atma of all beings, he is not tied down, even if he performs action. The wise who follow yoga know that. They are not doing anything, even when they see, hear, touch, smell, eat, go, dream and breathe, speak, discard, accept, open and close. They think of the senses circulating among the senses. He who establishes himself in the Brahman and giving up attachment, performs action, is not touched by sin, like water on the leaf of a lotus. To purify their hearts, yogis give up attachments and perform action only with their bodies, minds, intellect and senses attached to yoga and discarding attachment to fruits of action. They attain perpetual peace. Those who do not follow yoga and are attached to fruits because of desire remain in bondage. Discarding all action through his mind, the person who controls his body, the city with the nine gates, remains in happiness. He doesn't do anything himself, nor does he cause anyone to do anything. The Atma doesn't create ownership in the body nor action, nor does it create a relation with the fruits of action. Nature acts. The omnipresent Lord doesn't accept the sins or the good deeds of anybody. Knowledge is shrouded in ignorance. 
that is why beings are deluded but in those in whom that ignorance has been destroyed by the knowledge of the atma in them that knowledge expresses the great truth like the sun those whose intellect is focused on that egos are focused on that devotion is focused on that and adherence is focused on that those in whom sins have been destroyed through knowledge those beings are not reborn the wise look equally upon a brahman who is learned and humble a cow an elephant a dog and an outcast those whose minds are established in equality overcome the earth in this world because the brahman is equal and without fault therefore they remain established in the brahman established in the brahman such a person learned in the brahman is poised in intellect and without delusion not delighted at receiving something pleasant or agitated at receiving something unpleasant unattached to external objects his mind focused on the brahman he obtains the happiness that rests in the atma he enjoys eternal bliss pleasures from touch have a beginning and an end and are the reason for unhappiness o kontia the wise person does not obtain pleasure from these in this before giving up the body he who can tolerate the forces of desire and anger is a yogi and such a man is happy he whose happiness is insight he whose pleasure is insight and he whose light is insight that yogi alone has realized the brahman and obtains liberation in the brahman those who are without sin without doubt controlled in mind and engaged in the welfare of all beings such rishis attain liberation in the brahman freed from desire and anger controlled in mind and knowing the atma such sages attain liberation in the brahman all around them banishing external objects of touch from the mind focusing the eyes between the two eyebrows controlling the prana and aparna breath equally within the nose poised in the senses mind and intellect beyond desire fear and anger wishing liberation such a sage is always free knowing me to be the enjoyer of all yajnas and penance the lord of all the worlds and the well-wisher of all beings attains peace Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 6 The Lord said An ascetic and a yogi is he who performs prescribed action without attachment to the fruits of the action not someone who gives up sacrifices and action O descendant of the Pandu lineage what is known as asceticism know that to be yoga because without giving up desire no one can become a yogi for a sage desirous of ascending to yoga action is said to be the means for a person who has ascended to yoga tranquility is said to be the means when a person who gives up desire loses addiction to sensual outcomes and is also not attached to action then he said to have ascended to yoga use the atma to raise the atma do not lower the atma the atma is the atma's friend and the atma is the atma's enemy the atma 
which has been used to conquer the Atma, is the Atma's friend. For someone who has failed to control the Atma, the Atma harms like an enemy. For someone who has controlled the Atma and is tranquil, the Paramatma is undisturbed with cold, warmth, happiness, unhappiness and respect and disrespect. He whose Atma is satiated with knowledge, who is undisturbed and has conquered his senses. And he who looks upon a lump of earth, stone and gold equally, is said to be yogi, who has achieved union. Equal in treatment towards well-wisher, colleague, enemy, neutral, arbiter, a hateful person, friend, and a righteous person or a sinner, he is superior. Seated in a secluded place, alone, controlled in mind and body, without desire, without receiving and giving, a yogi should always try to pacify his Atma. In a pure place that is not too high, not too low, he will place his seat, cloth, and hide on kushadras, there, focusing the intellect, controlling the action of the mind and the senses. Seated on that seat, he will practice yoga to purify the Atma. Still, body, head and neck erect and unmoving, gazing at the tip of one's nose and not looking in any other direction. Tranquil in the Atma, without fear, established in the right of Brahmacharya, controlling the mind and uniting the intellect with me. Immerse yourself in me. In this way, the yogi will always pacify the Atma and be unwavering in his mind and established in me, will attain supreme and peaceful liberation. O oh, Arjun, he who eats too much cannot achieve yoga, nor he who doesn't eat at all, nor he who sleeps too much or stays awake too much. He who is measured in food and movement, measured in effort towards action, measured in sleep and awakening, for him, yoga destroys unhappiness when the intellect is specially controlled and established in the Atma, in that situation, indifferent towards all desire, yoga is said to have been achieved. For a yogi, whose intellect is controlled and the Atma is united, know the smile to be a lamp that doesn't flicker in a place where there is no wind. When the mind is controlled, and rendered inactive through the practice of yoga. When the Atma sees the Atma in the Atma and is satiated, when he feels the extreme bliss that is beyond the senses and realized through the intellect, undisturbed from truth. Obtaining that, not thinking other gains to be superior to this, established in that, not disturbed even by great unhappiness. Know this, without any contact with unhappiness to be yoga. Without hopelessness, one must practice that yoga with perseverance, forsaking in entirety all desire that results from wishes, using the mind itself to restrain the senses from everything using concentrated intellect to gradually withdraw, establishing the mind in the Atma and thinking about nothing, withdrawing from whatever the fickle and restless mind weaves towards, withdrawing it from that, bring it under the control of the Atma, tranquil in mind, having pacified the Rajas quality without sin, having attained the Brahman, the yogi achieves supreme happiness. Like that, always concentrating on the Atma, 
the pure yogi easily obtains intense bliss from proximity to the brahman the person immersed in yoga looks on everything equally and sees the atma in all beings and all beings in the atma he sees me everywhere and everything in me i am never invisible to him nor is he invisible to me he is based in equality and worships me i who am present in everything wherever that yogi is he is established in me o arjun he who compares with his own self and regards happiness and unhappiness in everything equally that yogi is supreme according to me arjun said o madhusudan because of restlessness i don't see the yog based on equality that you have propounded as permanent o krishna the mind is restless and the senses strong and firm therefore i think restraining it is as difficult as the wind the lord said o mighty armed one there is no doubt that the mind is restless and difficult to control but o konthe through practice and detachment it can be restrained my view is that yoga is difficult for someone whose mind is uncontrolled but it is possible to achieve for someone whose mind is controlled and who makes special effort arjun said oh krishna a person who has faithfully practiced yoga but later becomes careless and his mind deviates from yoga cannot achieve liberation through yoga what happens to him oh mighty armed one distracted from the path of attaining the brahman such a wavering person is dislodged from both like a torn cloud doesn't he perish oh krishna i have this doubt that only you can completely eliminate because there is no one other than you who can remove this doubt the lord said oh parth in this world no in the other world is there any destruction because o oh son a person who acts well never comes to grief he who has deviated from the path of yoga attains the worlds of the righteous and dwells there for many years thereafter he is born in a righteous and wealthy household or oh, he is born in the family of wise yogis but such birth is very rare in this world o oh, descendant of the kuru lineage in that birth obtains that intelligence about liberation from an earlier birth and thereafter strives again for liberation because of that earlier practice is almost involuntarily attracted a person who seeks yoga transcends the vedas striving harder than on that earlier occasion pure in heart the yogi obtains liberation after many lives and later achieves the supreme objective the yogi is superior to those who practice austerities superior to a learned superior to those who perform action that is my view o arjun therefore become a yogi my view is that he who is devoted and worships me with his self immersed in me is the most accomplished among all yogis श्रीमद्भगवद्गीता
Chapter 7 The Lord said, O Parth, listen to how you will know without any doubt the complete truth about me. Mind attached to me, seeking refuge in me, and immersed in yoga. I will completely tell you about the knowledge with self-realization, knowing that there is nothing more remaining to know. Among thousands of men, rarely one tries for liberation. Among those who try for liberation, perhaps one gets to know my true nature. Earth, water, fire, air, sky, mind, intellect, and ego. These are the eight parts of my nature. These are inferior nature. O oh, mighty armed one, besides this, know my superior and other nature, that is, the essence of living beings. The universe is held up by this. Know all matter to be born from these. I am the reason for the creation of the entire universe and its destruction. O oh, Dhananjay, there is nothing superior to me. Like jewels on a string, all this is threaded in me. O oh, Kontia, in the water, I am the sap. In the sun and the moon, I am the radiance. In all the Vedas, I am the Om syllable. In the sky, I am the sound. In humans, I am manifest as prowess and as pure fragrance in the earth. I become energy in the fire, life in all living beings. I become austerity in ascetics. O Parth, know me to be the eternal seed of all beings. I am intellect in the intelligent. I become energy in those who are energetic. O bull among the Bharata lineage, I am strength without desire and without attachment in those who are strong. In all living beings, I become desire that is sanctioned by dharma and know all the three conditions with sata, raja and tama predominating to be derived from me. I am not in them, they are in me. The entire universe is diluted by these three gunas and the resultant conditions and is not able to know me, who is above these without change. It is indeed difficult to overcome this divine aspect of mine, immersed in Kuras. Those who seek refuge in me alone, they are able to overcome this Maya. The evil doers, ignorant and worst among men, lose their knowledge because of Maya and resort to demonic states. They do not worship me. O bull among the Bharata lineage, O Arjun, there are four types of people, pure of heart, who worship me. Those who are suffering, those who want satisfaction, those who want self-knowledge, and those who know. Of these, those who know always united and worshipping only one are the best. I am extremely beloved by one who knows, and he is only my beloved. All these are righteous. 
but the man who knows is like my Atma. That is my view. Therefore, the united man who knows seeks refuge in me. The supreme of objectives. After many births are over, he attains the knowledge that Vasudeva is everything and attains me. Such great souls are extremely rare. Those whose knowledge has been dropped by those desires, according to their own nature, follow prescribed rites to worship other gods. Whatever form a devotee wishes to worship faithfully, in whatever way, in that and that, I make the faith firm and unwavering. With that faith, whatever form is worshipped and whatever fruits are obtained as a result are actually bestowed by me alone. The fruits of those who have little intellect come to an end. Worshippers of gods attain the gods. My devotees attain me. Those who are ignorant don't realize my supreme and unchanging nature and think of me. The one who is unmanifest as manifest, shrouded in my powers of yoga and maya. I am not evident to everyone. I am not born and am without change. But the ignorant world doesn't know me. O oh, Arjun, I know all beings in the past, the present and the future, but no one knows me. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, O oh, scorcher of foes, all beings are deluded at birth from opposite sensations, resulting from desire and aversion. But those whose sins have been overcome and those who are virtuous in action, they are freed from the delusion of opposite sensation and worship me, firm in their vows. Those who want to know about the Brahman, about the individual Atma and about action in its entirety, those who know me as the one who underlies all beings, all gods, and all yajnas right till the time of death. Their mind is fixed on me, and they know me. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 8 Arjun asked, O Supreme among men, what is that Brahman? What is the individual Atma? And what is action? What is said to underlies all beings and what is said to underlies all gods? O Madhusudhan, who underlies all yajnas in this body and how? by those who can control their Atma. How are you known at the time of death? The Lord said, The indestructible Brahman is the Supreme Spirit and its inhabitation of individual beings is called Adhyatma. Action is the offering that leads to the creation and sustenance of all beings. O Supreme among those who possess bodies, perishable elements are Abhibhuta and the Purusha is Adhideva. In this body, I myself am Adhiyajna. At the time of death, he who remembers me gives up his body and leaves. He attains my essence. There is no doubt about this. O Kantya, whatever essence is remembered at the time of death, giving up the body, a person immersed in that essence, 
is the essence that he attains. Therefore, always think of me and fight with mind and intellect offered to me. You will without doubt attain me alone. O Parth, united in the practice that is like yoga, without following anyone else, thinking of the Divine Supreme Spirit with the mind, attains that. He who thinks of the Omniscient, without beginning, the control of everything, finer than the minutest, and the upholder of everything with a form that is beyond thought, self-resplendent like the sun and beyond darkness, at the time of death, with devotion, with the mind fixed, with the strength of yoga, used to hold the breath of life between the brows, he attains the resplendent Supreme Spirit. He is the one whom those who know the Vedas speak of as indestructible. He is the one into whom unattached yogis enter. He is the one to attain when Brahmacharya is practiced. I will briefly tell you about reaching that goal of supreme liberation. Using all the senses and organs to control the mind and restrain it in the heart, bearing the breath of life between the brows, establishing one's Atma in Yoga, uttering the single syllable Om, that is the Brahman, and remembering me. He who gives up his body and leaves, he attains the goal of supreme liberation. O Parth, he who does not think of other things and remembers me every day and all the time. I am easily attainable to that yogi who is always focused. Great souls who attain me because they have achieved supreme liberation are freed from rebirth which is transient and the abode of sorrow. O oh, Arjun, from all the worlds up to Brahmalok, beings have to return. But O Kantya, there is no rebirth for those who have attained me. Those who know that a thousand yugas are Brahma's day, and a thousand yugas are Brahma's night, know the truth about day and night. When Brahma's day arrives, Every manifest object is created from the unmanifest. When Brahma's night arrives, like that, everything dissolves into the unmanifest. These are the beings who are born again and again and destroyed when night arrives. O Parth, when day arrives, they are involuntarily created again, but superior to that unmanifest is the other supreme and eternal unmanifest being that is not destroyed when all beings are destroyed. What is spoken of as the unmanifest and undestructible? What is said to be the supreme liberation, attaining which beings do not have to return? That is my supreme abode. O Parth, all beings are established in that, and by that is everything pervaded. That Supreme Purusha can only be attained through unwavering devotion. O bull among the Bharata lineage, I will now tell you about the road, which, if traversed, doesn't lead to yogis being reborn, and about the road, which, if traversed, leads to rebirth. The resplendence of the fire, the day, the bright half of the lunar month, the six months when the sun heads north, along that path those who worship the Brahman attain the Brahman. Smoke, night, the dark half of the lunar month, and the six months 
when the sun heads south. Along that path, the yogi attains the energy of the moon and returns again. In this world, these two paths of light and darkness are said to be eternal. One leads to non-return and the other leads to return. O Parth, knowing these two paths, a yogi is never deluded. O Arjun, therefore, at all times resort to yoga, knowing the prescribed good fruit that occurs from knowledge of the Vedas, yajnas, practice of austerities, and donation of arms. The yogi transcends all these and attains the supreme and original abode. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 9 The Lord said, You are not a detractor. I will tell you this extremely secret knowledge with self-realization. Knowing this, you will be freed from all evil. This is extremely secret and the king of knowledge. It is the best, pure, leads to direct and eternal results, is sanctioned by dharma and is easy to practice. O oh, scorcher of foes, people who show disrespect to this dharma don't attain me and traverse the path of death and this world. This entire universe is pervaded by me in my unmanifest form. All beings are established in me, but I am not established in them. Witness my divine yoga again. The beings are not established in me. My Atma holds up the beings and sustains the beings, but I am not established in the beings. Know that like the great wind, which goes everywhere, and is always established in the sky. All beings are established in me. O Kantia, at the time of destruction, all beings are dissolved in my nature. And at the time of creation, I create them. I keep my nature under control and repeatedly create these many beings helpless according to their own nature. O oh, Dhananjay, but I am unattached to those acts and am established in indifference. Those acts cannot tie me down. O oh, Kantya, because of my Lordship, nature gives birth to this universe with its movable and immovable objects. Because of this, universe is repeatedly created. The ignorant do not know my supreme nature as the great lord of all beings. They show disrespect to me as someone who has adopted a human form. Their desire is fruitless. Their action is fruitless. Their knowledge is fruitless. Their minds waver and their deluded nature is ruled by demonic qualities. O Parth, but those great souls who seek refuge in divine qualities are unwavering in their minds and worship me, knowing me to be the indestructible origin of all beings. Careful and firm in their rights, they faithfully offer obeisance and always sing my praise, always focused on worshipping me. Some worship me through the yajna, that is the path of knowledge. Some worship me as one, others as separate. I, who pervade the universe, am worshipped in many forms. I am Kratu, I am yajna. 
I am Savitha. I am the herbs. I am the mantra. I indeed am the clarified butter. I am the fire. I am the offering. I am the father, mother, grandfather, and sustainer of this universe. I am all that is pure and is to be known. I am the Om syllable. I am also the Rik, Sam, and Yaju. I am the goal, the sustainer, the controller, the witness, the abode, the sanctuary, the well-doer, the creator, the destroyer, the preserver, the repository, and the indestructible seed. O oh Arjun, I provide heat. I attract the water and rain it down again. I am immortality and death. I am the eternal and the transient. Those who know the three arts worship me through yajnas, drink somras, and purified of sins, wish to attain heaven. They attain sanctified heaven and in heaven enjoy the celestial objects enjoyed by the gods. Having enjoyed the greatness of heaven, when their good deeds are exhausted, they enter the mortal earth. In this way, the practitioners of the three dharmas, followers of desire, go back and forth. Those who worship me, minds focused on me alone and always immersed in me, I preserve for them what has been attained and what is yet to be attained. O Kontya, those with devotion who faithfully worship other gods, they too worship me alone. But not in the indicated way, because I alone am the receiver of offerings and the grantor of fruits at all yajnas. But they do not know my true nature and therefore are cast down. Those who worship the gods attain the gods. Those who worship the ancestors attain the ancestors. Those who worship the elements attain the elements. And mine attain me. He who faithfully worship me with a leaf, a flower, a fruit, a water, from that pure-hearted person, I gladly accept those faithful offerings. O Kontya, whatever you do, whatever you partake, whatever you offer, whatever you donate, whatever you meditate, Offer that to me. In this way, you will be freed from the bondage of fruits of righteous and evil action. With yourself in the yoga of sannyasa, freed, you will attain me. I am the same to all beings. I have no one I hate, nor anyone I love. But those who worship me with devotion, they are established in me, and I am established in them. Even if the most evil of persons worship me single-mindedly, he should be thought of as a righteous person, because his resolve is correct. Swiftly, he becomes a righteous person and attains eternal peace. O Kontya, my worshippers are never destroyed. This you can vouch for, O Parth. Even those who are of evil birth, women, Vaishya and Shudra, having sought refuge in me, they will certainly attain supreme liberation. 
There is no need to repeat about pure Brahmins and devoted Rajarishis. This earth is temporary and leads to unhappiness. Therefore, having attained, worship me. With mind immersed in me, become my devotee, my worshipper, and one who offers obedience to me. In this way, with your Atma united in me as the refuge, you will attain me alone. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 10 The Lord said, O mighty armed one, listen once more to my supreme words. These are pleasing you, and for your welfare I am saying this. The host of gods does not know of my origin, nor do the Maharishis. Because in every way I am the original cause of the gods and the great sages. He who knows me as without origin and without birth and as the greatest lord of the worlds is freed from delusion among men and freed from all sins, intellect, knowledge, freedom from delusion, forgiveness, truthfulness, Control over the senses, control over thoughts, happiness, unhappiness, creation, destruction, fear, and freedom from fear, non-violence, equality, satisfaction, austerity, donations, fame, and lack of fame. All these states of beings indeed owe their origin to me. The seven great sages, the four who came before them, and the Manus owe their origin to me and were created from my resolution. In this world, everything is descended from them. There is no doubt that he who truly knows my divine yoga is united with unwavering yoga. I am the origin of everything. From me is everything instituted. Knowing this, the wise, immersed in devotion, worship me. Minds on me, lives in me, explaining my nature to each other and always conversing. They attain satisfaction and happiness. I provide that kind of yoga of intellect to those who are always immersed in me and lovingly worship me using that they attain me with compassion towards them. I always established inside them as the bright lamp of knowledge destroying the darkness born out of ignorance. Arjun said, You are the Supreme Brahman the supreme abode and supreme sacredness. You are the eternal Purusha, self-resplendent, the predecessor of the gods. Without birth and omnipresent, all the sages and Devrishi Narad and Asit Deval and Vyas describe you thus. You have yourself as told me this. O Keshiva, I accept all that you are telling me as true. Because, O Lord, even the gods and the demons do not know your manifestations. O Supreme Being, O Creator of Beings, O Lord of Beings, O Lord of the Gods, O Lord of the Universe, you alone know your own self through your own self. Whatever divine powers you use to pervade these worlds, you alone are capable of relating to me in detail those self-resplendent divine powers. Oh, Yogi, how can I always think of you and know you? Oh, lustrous one, in what object can you be thought of by me? Oh, Janardhan, tell me once again in detail about the power of your yoga. Because 
hearing your immortal words, I am not satisfied, the Lord said. O oh, foremost among the Kuru lineage, Paul right. I will tell you about my main divine manifestations, because there is no end to the detail of my powers. O oh, Gudakesha, I am the Atma established in the heart of all beings. It is I who am the origin, the middle, and also the end of all beings. I am Vishnu among the Adityas. I am the radiant sun among the shining bodies. I am Marich among the Marut. I am the moon among the stars. I am the Samveda among the Vedas. Among the gods, I am Vatsva. I am the mind among the senses. And in beings, I am the consciousness. I am Shankar among the Rudra. I am Kubair among the Yakshas and the Rakshas. I am fire among the Vasus. Among the mountains, I am Meru. O Parth, know me to be Brihaspati, foremost among the priests. Among generals, I am Skanda. Among water bodies, I am the ocean. Among great sages, I am Bhrigu. Among words, I am the single syllable. Among yajnas, I am Chap Yajna. Among immovable objects, I am the Himalayas. Among all trees, I am the fig tree. And among divine sages, I am Narad. Among Gandharvs, I am Chitrarat. And among those who have attained liberation, I am the sage Kapil. Among horses, know me to be Uchaishrava, arising from the mortal nectar. Among great elephants, I Ravat. And among men, the king. Among weapons, I am Vajra. Among cows, I become Kamadhenu. I become Kandarpa for procreation. And among snakes, I am Vasuki. Among serpents, I am Ananta. Among those who inhibit the water, I am Varun. Among the ancestors, I am Aryam. Among those who control, I am Yam. Among demons, I am Prahlad. Among those who Deva, I am Time. And I am the lion among animals. Among birds, I am the son of Vinatha. Among those that purify, I am the wind. Among those who bear weapons, I am Ram. Among fish, I am the shark. And among rivers, I am Janavi, O Arjun. I alone am the beginning, the end, and the middle of all created objects. Among all forms of knowledge, I am knowledge of the Self. Among debaters, Veda. Among letters, I am the letter A. Among different forms of Samas, I am Dwand. Indeed, I am indestructible time. My face is in every direction. I am the controller of destiny. I am death that robs everything. And I am the origin of the future. Among women, I am fame, prosperity, speech, memory, intellect, fortitude, and forgiveness. In the Samved, I am Brihatsam. Among meters, I am Gayatri. Among months, I am Margashirsha. Among seasons, I am Kusumakra. I am gambling among those who wish to cheat. I am energy in the energetic. I am victory, preservance. I am the sattva quality in the righteous. I am Vasudeva among the Vrishnis. I am Dhananjay among those of the Pandu clan. I am Vyas among the sages. Among the wise, 
I am the wise Ushantsa. I am Danda among those who rule. I am strategy for those who wish to win. Among secret subjects, I am silence. I am knowledge among the wise. O oh, Arjun, whatever the seed of origin of every being, that is me alone. There is nothing movable or immovable that can come into being without me. O oh, scorcher of foes, there is no end to my divine glory. Whatever I have started of this expense of glory is only a brief indication. Know that whatever object is glorious, prosperous, or indeed extremely powerful, that has originated from a part of my energy. O oh, Arjun, but what is the need to know all these details? I am established, holding up this entire universe with only a part of me. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 11 Arjun said, Out of compassion for me, the extremely secret Adhyatma knowledge that you have stated has destroyed this delusion of mine. O oh, one with the eyes like lotus leaves, from you I have heard in detail about the creation and destruction of all beings, and also your eternal greatness. O oh, Supreme Lord, what you have said about yourself is indeed like that. O oh, Supreme Being, I wish to see your divine form. O oh, Lord, if you think that I am worthy of seeing that, then, O oh Lord of Yoga, show me your indestructible self. The Lord said, O oh Parth, behold my divine multi-dimensioned, multi-hued, multi-shaped, hundreds and thousands of forms. O oh descendant of the Bharata lineage, see the Adityas, the Vasus, the Rudras, the Ashwinis and the Maruts. See the many wonderful things you have never seen before. O oh, Godakesha, in my body, in one place, see the entire universe. With all that is movable and immovable, also see today whatever else you want to see. You will not be able to see me with your own eyes. Therefore, I am giving you divine sight. Witness my divine glory. Sanjay said, O king, having said this, Hari, the great lord of yoga, then showed Parth the divine and supreme form. With many mouths and eyes, with many miraculous things to see, adorned in many resplendent ornaments, with many divine weapons raised, with divine garlands and clothing, anointed with divine fragrances, extremely wonderful everywhere, resplendent, infinite, with faces in every direction. If the brilliance of a thousand suns simultaneously rises in the sky, then that brilliance can rival the brilliance of that great soul. Then Pandav saw the entire universe in one place, divided into many parts, in that great God of God's body. Then amazed, and with his body hair standing up, Dhananjay bowed down before the God with his head lowered, and with joint palms, said, Arjun said, O oh Lord, in your body, I see all the gods and all the different types of beings, the divine sages and all the serpents, and the creator Brahma, seated on a lotus. O Lord of the universe, O universal form, I see you with many arms, many stomachs, many faces and many eyes everywhere. And I don't see an end, a middle or a beginning to you, with the crown, with the maze, 
with a chakra resplendent everywhere, like a mass of energy, impossible to see, brilliant like the burning fire and the sun, impossible to measure. I see you in every direction. I have no doubt that you are eternal and supreme and the only thing worth knowing. You are the supreme refuge of this universe. You are the indestructible and original being, the upholder of ancient dharma. I behold you without beginning, middle and end, infinite in strength, with uncountable arms, the sun and moon in your eyes, face like ignited fire, scorching this universe with your energy. O oh, great soul, the space between the sky and the earth is pervaded only by you. The directions are also pervaded. Witnessing this miraculous and terrible form, the three worlds are suffering. That array of gods is entering you alone. Some are frightened and with joined palms are craving protection. The array of great sages and pure souls are uttering words of pacification and are worshipping you. With pure and profound prayers, the Rudras, the Adityas, the Vasus and the Sadhyas, the Vishwadevas, the Ashwinis and the Maruts, those who partake warm food, the Gandharvas, the Yakshas, the Asurs and arrays of the Siddhas are all gazing at you with amazement. O oh, mighty armed one, the worlds are terrified, and so am I at witnessing your great form with many faces and eyes, many stomachs, many arms, thighs and feet, fearsome with many teeth. O oh, Vishnu, touching the sky, resplendent, multi-hued, mouths stretched out, eyes large and fairy. Seeing you, I am frightened, and I cannot maintain my fortitude and peace. Seeing your several faces, fearsome with teeth and blazing like the fire of destruction, I have lost my sense of direction. I cannot find happiness, O oh Lord of the Gods, O oh refuge of the universe. Have mercy. All those sons of Thritrashtra, with the collected kings and Bhishma, Drona, and that son of Asutta, and the chief warriors on our side, are dashing into your fearsome mouth with the terrible teeth. Some of them can be seen, heads smashed and attached to the joints of the teeth. Truly, like many currents and rivers, head towards and enter the ocean. Thus, those warriors of this earth are entering your mouths, flaming in all directions. As moths driven to destruction speedily enter a blazing fire, like that, these people are also swiftly entering your mouths for destruction. O oh, Vishnu, in all directions, you are repeatedly licking having swallowed all the worlds with your flaming mouths. Your fierce resplendence is scorching, having filled the universe with energy. Who are you? Tell me, you of the fierce form. I bow down before you. O oh, great God, be merciful. I wish to know you. You who are the beginning, because I do not understand your inclination. The Lord said, I am the terrible destroyer of people. I am now about to destroy these people. Even without you, all the warriors in the opposing army formations will not exist. O oh, Savyasachi, therefore, arise, attain fame, 
triumph over enemies and enjoy the undisputed kingdom. These have already been slain by me. You will only be the instrument. Kill Drun and Bhishma and Jayadrat and Karn and the other brave warriors also already killed by me. Don't be apprehensive. You will be able to triumph over enemies in battle. Fight. Sanjay said, Hearing these words of Keshav's, the trembling Arjun joined his palms and saluting Krishna, again said in a flattering tone, bowing down in fear. Arjun said, Oh Rishikesh, it is natural that the universe is extremely delighted to hear of your glory and is attracted to you. The Rakshas are scared and flee in all directions and all the arrays of Siddhas bow down. O oh, great soul, O oh, infinite, O oh, Lord of the gods, O oh, refuge of the universe, you are greater than Brahma and the original agent. Why should you not be saluted? The manifest and the unmanifest and the indestructible that is beyond is also you. You come before the gods. You are the eternal being. You are the abode of the universe after destruction. You are the knower, that which is to be known and the supreme abode. By you is the universe pervaded and you are infinite in form. You are Vayu, Yam, Agni, Varun, Shashank, Prajapati and the Great Grandfather. I salute you a thousand times and again salute you and yet again salute you. I salute you in front and from the back. I salute you everywhere, in every direction. O possessor of infinite energy and unlimited strength, you pervade everything. Therefore, you are everything. Without knowing your glory and also this, inadvertently and in affection, thinking of you as a friend, expressions like O oh Krishna, O oh Yadav, O oh friend, have been rudely used by me. O oh Achyut, at times of sport, sleeping, sitting or eating, alone or in front of other equals, in jest, you have faced irreverence and for that, I crave forgiveness from you, whose power is beyond thought. O oh, infinite power, you are the father, worshipped, teacher and also the greatest of all movable and immovable objects in the worlds. In the three worlds, there is no one equal to you. Where can there be someone greater than you? O oh God, for that reason, I prostrate my body and bow before this revered God and craving your blessings like a sense by the father, a friends by a friend and to lovers by the beloved. Forgive. O oh God, having seen that which has not been witnessed before, I am delighted. But again, my mind is disturbed by fear. Therefore, show me your earlier form. O Lord of the gods, O abode of the universe, be merciful. I wish to see your earlier form, crowned with a mace and chakra in hand. O thousand armed one, O universal form, become manifest in your four-armed form.
the Lord said, O Arjun, having been pleased with my powers of yoga, I have shown this resplendent, infinite, primeval, and supreme universal form. Apart from you, this has not been seen by anyone before. O great hero of the Kuru lineage, not through the Vedas, Yajnas, study, nor through donations, nor even action or severe austerities, can this form of mind be witnessed by anyone other than you in this human world. Be not fearful at witnessing this fierce form of mind. Be not bewildered. Overcoming fear with a happy mind, may you behold that, my earlier form. Sanjay said, Having said this, Vasudev again showed Arjun his natural form. Having again assumed his peaceful form, the great soul assured the scared Arjun. Arjun said, O oh Janardhan, having seen your peaceful and human form, my mind is now calmed and I am in control of my senses. I have become normal. The Lord said, The form of mind that you have seen is difficult to witness. The gods themselves are always desirous of seeing this form. Not through the Vedas, nor austerities, nor donations, nor even yajnas, is it possible to see me in the form that you have seen me in. O scorcher of foes, O Arjun, it is only through single-minded devotion that this form of mind can be truly known or seen, or it becomes possible to get immersed in me. O Pandav, he who undertakes action for my sake is attached to me, is devoted to me, is detached and without enmity towards all beings, attains me. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 12 Arjun said, In this way, there are devotees who are always immersed in you and worship you, and there are those who think of the unmanifest and the indestructible. Who among these is the best yogi? The Lord said, Those who worship me with minds fixed on me, always united in me with supreme devotion. In my view, they are the best yogis. But those who worship the indestructible, indescribable, unmanifest, omnipresent, unthinkable, original, immovable and constant, controlling properly the senses and looking upon everything equally, acting for the welfare of all beings, they only attain me. Those who wish to immerse their minds in the unmanifest find it more difficult because those who possess bodies attain the goal of the unmanifest with great perseverance. O Parth, those who offer all action to me are devoted to me and with single-minded yoga meditate on me and worship me with minds rendered unto me. I become swiftly their rescuer from this mortal world that is like an ocean. Establish your mind in me alone. Fix your intellect on me. After that, there is no doubt that you will live with me alone. O oh, Dhananjay, if you cannot steady your mind and fix it on me, then practice yoga and wish to attain me. 
If you don't succeed in the practice, then do only my deeds. Even if you do acts for my pleasure, you attain liberation. If, however, you are unable to perform these deeds also, then control your mind, give up attachment to the fruits of all action, and seek refuge in the yoga that is mine. Knowledge is superior to practice. Meditation is superior to knowledge. Giving up attachment to the fruits of action is superior to meditation. After renunciation, tranquility is attained. He who has no hatred for all beings is friendly and also displays compassion, is without sense of ego, without pride, regards happiness and unhappiness in the same way and is forgiving, is always satisfied, a yogi, and controlled in mind, firm in resolution, and with mind and intellect immersed in me. Such a devotee of mine is dear to me. He from whom other people are not disturbed, and he who is not disturbed by other people, and he who is free from delight, dissatisfaction, Fear and concern is dear to me. Without desire, pure, enterprising, neutral, without pain, and one who has renounced all fruit, such a devotee is dear to me. He who is not delighted, nor hates, he who does not sorrow, nor desires, he who has given up good and evil, such a devotee, is dear to me, equal between friend and enemy, and respect and insult, equal between cold and warmth, happiness and unhappiness, and without all attachments, like between criticism and praise, restrained in speech, satisfied with whatever is obtained, without habitation, and controlled in mind, such a devoted man is dear to me. Those who are devoted and look upon me as the supreme goal and worship according to this immortal dharma, such devotees are extremely dear to me. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 13 the Lord said, O Kantiya, this body is known as the Shitra. He who knows this is called the Shitrakya by those who have the knowledge. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, in every field know me to be the Shitrakya. My view is that knowledge about Shitra and Shitrakya is knowledge. Briefly hear from me what is that Kshetra, its nature and its transformation, and cause and effect within it, also that and its power. The Rishis have sung this in different meters in several diverse ways. The definite logical arguments are also there in the Brahma Sutra passages, the great elements the ego, the intellect, and the unmanifest, the ten organs of sense, and the single one, and the objects of the five senses, desire, hatred, happiness, unhappiness, combination, consciousness, patience, these together are said to be the Kshetra and its transformations. Lack of ego, lack of arrogance, lack of injury, forgiveness, humility, servitude towards teachers, purity, single-mindedness, and control over the self, detachment towards gratification of the senses, and lack of vanity, indifference towards unhappy travails like birth, death, aging and disease, non-attachment, 
no sense of belonging in wife, son and home. Always equality in mind, whether good or evil results, faithfulness and devotion to me, fixedness and non-deviation in yoga, habitation in secluded spots, aversion to crowds, devotion to knowledge about the Atma and search for true knowledge. These are known as knowledge. Anything opposed is ignorance. I will state that which is to be known, knowing that attains immortality, that Brahman without origin is my form. It is said, both eternal and transit, that has hands and feet everywhere, eyes, heads and mouths everywhere, and ears everywhere, is established in everything in this world manifest in the qualities of all the senses, but without any sense, alone like the abode of everything, without qualities and the preserver of all qualities. That is outside all beings and yet inside them, moving and unmoving beyond knowledge because of subtleness, far and yet near. That is indivisible, but exists in every being in divided form, know as the preserver, destroyer, and the creator of all beings. That is the light of all pride bodies, said to be beyond darkness. Knowledge, that which is to be known and attainable through knowledge, is established in the heart of everything. Briefly, Kshetra, and that which is knowledge, and to be known have been stated. Knowing this, my devotee attains my nature. Know both Prakriti and Purusha to be without origin, and from transformations and the qualities to result from Prakriti. Prakriti is said to be the reason behind cause and effect. Purusha is said to be for happiness and unhappiness in enjoyment because Purusha is established in Prakriti and enjoys Prakriti's qualities. And its good and evil birth is because of its association with these qualities. The Supreme Being in this body is known as one who witnesses, one who allows, one who sustains, one who enjoys the Supreme Lord and the Paramatma. He who knows the nature of Purusha and of Prakriti, whatever be the position he is in, will not be reborn. Some through meditation see the Atma in the Atma with the Atma. Others use Shankhya Yoga and still others use Karma Yoga and others failing to know, hear from others and worship. Even they who are devoted to hearing Transcend death. O best of the Bharata lineage, whatever movable and immovable objects are created, know them to result from the link between Kshetra and Kshetraj. He truly sees who beholds the indestructible Supreme Lord equally in all beings, while everything else is destructible. He who sees the Great Lord equally established in everything. He doesn't kill the Atma with the Atma and therefore attains supreme liberation. He who perceives all action as being performed by Prakriti and the Atma as a non-agent, he truly beholds. When he sees the different aspects of beings as established in one, and also everything manifested from there, he attains the Brahman. O Kantya, because it is without origin and without qualities, this Paramatma is unchanging and although based in the body, does nothing. It is not attached, as the sky that is everywhere is not attached because of its subtlety. Like that, the Atma is not attached 
though it is in every body. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, just as a single sun lights up the entire world, like that, a single Kshetri lights up all Kshetras, those who, through their eyes of knowledge, know the difference between Kshetra and Kshetragya in this way, and freedom from beings and Prakriti, they attain the supreme goal. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 14 The Lord said, I am again starting the excellent and supreme out of all types of knowledge, knowing that all the sages are freed from this and attain supreme liberation, seeking refuge in this knowledge and attaining my true nature. They are not born at the time of creation, nor suffer at the time of destruction. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, the great Brahman is my womb. Into that I place the seed, and from that all the beings are created. O Kantya, the different forms that are created in all wombs the great Brahman is like their mother, and I am the father who provides the seed. O mighty armed one, the qualities Sattva, Raja and Tama generated from nature bind the indestructible Atma in the body. O sinless one, among these, Sattva is shining because it is pure and without sin but ties down the Atma because of attachment to happiness and knowledge. O Kantya, no Raja to be based on desire and the origin of thirst and attachment that binds the Atma firmly because of attachment to action. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, no Tama to be born from ignorance and the source of delusion in every being that binds firmly through error, sloth and sleep. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, Sattva attaches to happiness and Raja attaches to action. Tama veils knowledge and attaches to errors. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, Sattva overcomes Raja and Tama and becomes strong. Raja, Sattva and Tama and Tama, Sattva and Raja. Know that when the light of knowledge is ignited in all the gates of this body, it is only then that Sattva becomes strong. O best of the Bharata lineage, create inclination, beginnings of action, restlessness and desire. These are created when Rajat becomes strong. O descendant of the Kuru lineage, darkness, lack of enterprise, inadvertence and delusion. These are created when Tama becomes strong. For being dies when Sattva becomes strong, then he attains the shining world reserved for those who have the supreme knowledge. Death, when Rajas becomes strong, leads to rebirth as someone addicted to action. And death, when Tamat, leads to rebirth as subhuman species. It has been said that Sattva type action has the fruit of pure happiness. Rajatype has the fruit of unhappiness and Tamatype has the fruit of ignorance. From Sattva, wisdom results and from Raja, greed and from Tama, only inadvertence, delusion and ignorance result. 
Those with a preponderance of sattva ascend above. Those with raja stay in the middle. Those with despicable tamma qualities descend below. When the seer doesn't see any agent other than the qualities and knows that which is beyond the qualities, he attains my nature. When the being transcends the three qualities that are the origin of the body, he attains immortality, free from birth, death, old age and unhappiness. Arjun said, O oh Lord, from what science does one know who has transcended? What is his conduct and how does he transcend these three qualities? The Lord said, O Pandav, he who is engaged in knowledge and inclination and delusion and yet does not hate nor desire if these are withdrawn, he is established in indifference and the qualities don't disturb him. Knowing the action of the qualities to be of this form, he is steady and doesn't waver equal between happiness and unhappiness established in himself equal between earth stone and gold similar in treatment of the loved and the hated tranquil similar between praise and censure he who treats respect and insult alike friend and enemy alike and discards all beginnings of action, he is said to have transcended the qualities. He who worships me single-mindedly and with unwavering devotion, he transcends these qualities and is worthy of attaining the state of the Brahman, because I am the embodiment of the Brahman, indestructible, immortal, and also of eternal dharma, and absolute bliss. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 15 The Lord said, They say the Ashwatthwa tree, the holy fig tree, with the root above and branches below is indestructible. He who knows that its leaves are the meters knows the truth, specially nurtured by the gunas with objects as its shoots, its branches extend upwards and downwards. In the world of men, its rootlings stretch downwards, the cause of action. In this, this form is nor felt nor the end, nor the beginning, nor even its establishment slicing the thick root of the Ashwatthwa with the weapon of firm detachment. Thereafter, one must seek that goal, the attainment of which means no return, stating, I seek refuge in that original being. Without pride and delusion, having conquered the fault of attachment, constant in the knowledge of the Atma, having restrained desired, freed from the opposites of happiness and unhappiness, the wise go to that indestructible goal. Attaining that, there is no return. The sun cannot light that, nor the moon, nor fire. That is my supreme abode, indeed. Part of my eternal form is established as beings in nature and attracts the mind and six senses to the world of beings. Like the wind carries away fragrance from receptacles, the Lord, when it discards one body and attains another one, takes these with it and leaves. This is established in the ears, the eyes, touch, the tongue, the nose, and also the mind and enjoys objects. The deluded do not see the establishment and also the enjoyment and progress with the qualities as attributes. 
those with eyes of wisdom see this. Careful yogis established in the Atma see this. Despite care, those who are not established in the Atma and are without consciousness do not see this. The energy in the sun that lights up the entire world, that in the moon and that too in the fire, know that energy to be mine. I enter the earth and hold up the beings with my energy. As the watery moon, I nourish all the herbs. I am established in the bodies of beings as the fire of digestion. I mingle with the prana and apana breath and digest the four types of food. I am established in the hearts of all beings. I result in memory and knowledge and their lack. Indeed, it is I who am the knowledge of the Vedas and the origin of Vedanta, and I am the knower of the Vedas, the destructible and the indestructible. These two Purushas exist in the world. All these beings are destructible. The fixed is known as the indestructible, that apart. There is a Supreme Purusha known as the Paramatma, who enters the three worlds and sustain them, the indestructible Lord, because I am beyond destruction and superior even to the indestructible. Therefore, I am known as the Supreme Being in this world and in the Vedas. O descendant of the Bharata lineage, Without delusion, he who knows me as the Supreme Being, he is omniscient and worships me in every way. O Pure One, O Descendant of the Bharata lineage, thus this extremely secret knowledge has been related by me. This understanding leads to knowledge and accomplishment. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 16 The Lord said, O descendant of the Bharata lineage, absence of fear, pureness of heart, steadiness in Jnana Yoga, donation and control, yajnas, self-study, practice of austerities and simplicity, absence of injury to others, truthfulness, lack of anger, renunciation, tranquility, lack of criticism of others, compassion towards beings, lack of avarice, gentleness, sense of shame, steadfastness, energy, forgiveness, perseverance, cleanliness, absence of hatred, absence of ego, these belong to the person born towards divine wealth. O Parth, arrogance, insolence, egoism, anger, cruelty, and ignorance. These belong to birth towards demonic wealth. Divine wealth is for liberation. Demonic wealth is for bondage. O Pandav, do not sorrow, you have been born towards divine wealth. O Parth, in this world two types of beings are created, divine and demonic. The divine has been stated in detail. Hear from me about the demonic. Demonic people do not know about inclination and disinclination. In them there is no purity, nor righteousness, nor even truthfulness. They say the world is full of falsehood, without basis, without a lord, created without continuity, and with no reason other than to satisfy desire. Resorting to such views, with distorted minds, little intelligence, 
and cruel action. They perform evil deeds. They are born to destroy the world, seeking refuge in insatiable desires, deluded with a sense of insolence, pride and arrogance, accepting search of the untrue and performing impure rites they act resorting to immeasurable thoughts till the time of destruction, convinced certainly that the enjoyment of desire is supreme, tied down with the news of a hundred hopes, prone to lust and anger, and accepting evil means for the sake of desire gratification, the wish to accumulate wealth. Today I have gained this. I will get that desired object later, I have this, and again that wealth will also be mine. This enemy has been killed by me. I will also kill the others. I am the Lord. I am the enjoyer. I am the successful, strong and happy. I am wealthy and of noble descent. Who is there equal to me? I will perform yajnas. I will donate, I will pleasure myself. Deluded by ignorance in this way, minds distracted by many thoughts. Caught in the net of delusion, addicted to gratification of desires, they are hurled into impure hell, self-glorifying, haughty, proud because of wealth, they insolently perform unsanctioned rites that are yajnas only in name resorting to vanity, strength, insolence, desire and anger. They hate me in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and are disfavored. In this world, I hurl those hateful, cruel, evil and burst among men into demonic births several times. O oh, Kontia, from birth to birth, the deluded don't attain me and obtaining demonic births go down even further. Desire, anger, and avarice. These are the three types of doors to hell and destroyers of the Atma. Give up these three. O Kontia, the man who is freed from these three dark doors and follows that which is good for the Atma, thereafter attains the supreme goal. He who deviates from the prescription of the Shastras and acts as he desires like doing, that person doesn't attain liberation or happiness or the supreme goal. Therefore, in deciding what should be done and what should not be done, the Shastras are your test. In this, get ready to perform action, knowing what the Shastras prescribe. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 17 Arjun said, Those who discard the prescriptions of the Shastras but worship with recourse to faith, what is their devotion like? Is it Sattva, Raja or Tama? The Lord said, According to their nature, people show three kinds of faith, Sattva type, Raja type and Tama type. Listen to this, O descendant of the Bharata lineage. Everyone's faith follows his inner nature. This being is full of faith. The kind of faith one has makes the person. Those of the Sattva type worship the gods. Those of Raja type, Yakshas and Rakshas. The others of the Tama type worship ghosts and devils, those who perform terrible austerities not sanctioned by the Shastras, full of insolence and ego, deriving strength from desire and attachment, devoid of consciousness, torture the elements in the body and also me inside the body. Know them to be driven by demonic resolution, 
the favorite food of all is of three types and so to sacrifice meditation and donations listen to the distinction between these the sattva type favor food that increases life expectancy vitality strength freedom from disease happiness and joy tasty oily nourishing and pleasant the raja type favor food that is extremely spicy acidic salty hot pungent dry and burning increasing unhappiness sorrow and disease the tamo type favor food cooked a long time ago no longer succulent and with a bad smell stale and tasted by others impure the sacrifices performed according to prescribed rites pacifying the mind without attachment to fruits and only because such sacrifices ought to be performed are of the sattva type o oh, best of the bharata lineage but no sacrifices performed in search of fruits or oh, indeed because of insolence to be of the raja type sacrifices without following prescribed rites without donating food without mantras without donations and without faith are said to be of the tamo type worship of gods brahmanas teachers and the wise purity simplicity brahmacharya and non violence these are known as physical austerities not uttering words that leads to anxiety speaking the truth and that which is pleasant and leads to welfare and self study these are known as verbal austerities tranquility of mind lack of cruelty reserve in speech control of one's self purity in attitude all these are known as mental austerities these three types of austerities performed single mindedly by men without attachment to fruits and with supreme faith are said to be of the sattva type austerities performed with the objective of obtaining praise respect or worship and based on insolence are said to be of the raja type and in this are temporary and uncertain austerities performed on the basis of delusion resulting in the oppression of one's self or undertaken to destroy others are said to be of the tamo type arms donated for the sake of donation to those who have not benefited the donor and based on place time and subject are said to be of the sattva type but donations for the sake of return favors or for the fruits or given unwillingly are said to be of the raja type donations in the wrong place at the wrong time and to the wrong subject given without respect and disdainfully are said to be of the tamo type o tat sat in these three ways the brahman has been described in the sacred texts from this in the past brahmanas and the vedas and yajnas have been created therefore according to prescribed rites sacrifices donations and austerities by those who are learned in the brahman are always undertaken after uttering om those who desire liberation give up desire for fruits and undertake sacrifices donations and austerities after uttering tat o parth sat is used to signify existence and superiority and the word sat is also used for auspicious acts steadfastness in sacrifices donations and austerities is known as sat an action performed towards those ends is also indeed known as sat o part sacrifices donations and austerities and any other action undertaken without faith are known as the opposite of sat 
with nothing in this world or in the afterworld. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Chapter 18 Arjun said, O mighty armed one, O Rishikesh, O slayer of Keshi, I wish to separately understand the essence of renunciation and relinquishing. The Lord said, The wise know the relinquishing of action that satisfies desires as sannyas. The discriminating call, the relinquishing of the fruits of all action, tyaga. Some learned people say that all action is associated with evil and should be relinquished. Some others say that action like sacrifices, donations and austerities should not be relinquished. O Supreme among the Bharata lineage, Listen to my decided views about that relinquishing. O tiger among men, it has been said that relinquishing is of three types. Sacrifices, donations and austerities are not to be relinquished. Those actions certainly have to be performed because sacrifices Donations and austerities purify the hearts of the learned. O Parth, but even these actions should be performed through relinquishing attachment and fruits. That is my decided and supreme view. It is not advisable to renounce indicated action. Discarding this through delusion is known as tamotype. He who relinquishes action because action leads to discomfort and requires physical exertion performs rajatype relinquishing. He doesn't receive the fruits from relinquishing. O oh, Arjun, sattva-type relinquishing is known as that where attachment and fruits are relinquished, an action is performed only because it is indicated action immersed in the sattva quality, steady in learning and without doubt, the relinquisher doesn't hate disagreeable action and become addicted to agreeable action. He who possesses a body cannot give up action in its entirety because he relinquishes fruits of action. He is known as a true relinquisher. Those who don't relinquish face three types of fruits of their action in the afterworld. Bad, good and mixed. But sannyasis don't. O oh, mighty armed one, in the sacred texts, five reasons are described in support of performing all action. Hear these from me. The abode and also the agent. Different types of instruments and different and various types of endeavor. And the fifth is the divine. Whatever action, appropriate or inappropriate, a man begins through the body, the mind and speech, is caused by these five. Although this is the state of affairs, he who thinks of the Absolute Atma as the agent, his intelligence is unrefined and that ignorant person doesn't see. He who has no sense of ego and whose intelligence is unattached, even if he slays all these people, doesn't really kill and is not tied down. Knowledge, that which can be known and the knower are the three impetuses behind action. The action, the instrument and the agent form the base for action. According to qualities, 
three types of differences in knowledge and action and the agent are described in Shankhya. Listen properly to that too. That which is in all beings in differentiated form sees the undifferentiated and indestructible substance. Know that to be sattva type knowledge. But the knowledge through which one sees in all beings in differentiated form, differentiated and separate substances, know that to be raja type knowledge. But that which is attached to a single action is illogical, trivial, and without true knowledge, that is known as tamma type. Action where fruits have been relinquished without attachment, without love or hate, performed only because it is indicated, is known as sattva type. Again, action undertaken with great difficulty by those with desire for fruits or with a sense of ego is known as raja type. Action begun under delusion, without consideration of consequences, destruction, injury and one's own capabilities is known as tamma type. An agent who is without attachment, without sense of ego, patient and enthusiastic equal in attitude towards success and failure is known as sattva type. An agent who is attached, desirous of fruits of action, avaricious, injurious, impure and swayed by joy and sorrow is known as raja type. An agent who is not steady, vulgar, insolent, fraudulent, disrespectful, lazy, despondent and procrastinating is known as tamma type. O Dhananjay, according to quality of intellect and perseverance, the, there are three types of differences. Listen to what is being said, separately and comprehensively. O Parth, the intellect that knows inclination and disinclination right action and wrong, fear and freedom from fear, bondage and liberation is sattva type. O Parth, the intellect through which one does not correctly understand dharma and adharma and right action and wrong is raja type. O Parth, the intellect through which one thinks evil action is righteous and in every way thinks the opposite shrouded in ignorance, that is tamma type. O Parth, the perseverance through which one uses unwavering yoga to focus the functions of the mind, the breath of life and the senses, that perseverance is sattva type. O Parth, O Arjun, the perseverance through which dharma, arth and karma are sought and according to the area, fruits desired is known as raja type. O Parth, the perseverance through which the misguided person doesn't discard dreaming. Fear, sorrow, despondency and ego is known as tamma type. O bull among the Bharata lineage, now hear from me about the three types of happiness where happiness comes from gradual practice and there is an end to unhappiness, that which is initially like poison but at the end like ambrosia, based on the tranquility of one's intellect focused on the Atma, that is known as sattva type, that which comes from association with objects and the senses and is initially like ambrosia but at the end like poison. That happiness is said to be raja type. The happiness that at the beginning and at the end binds and dilutes the Atma and that which is created from sleep, sloth and inadvertence is known as tamma type. On earth, 
in heaven and even among the gods. There doesn't exist anything that is free from these three qualities generated from nature. O scorcher of foes, the actions of Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and also Shudras are separately segregated in accordance with qualities that result from their natures. Control over the mind, control over the senses, meditation, purity, forgiveness, simplicity, knowledge, self-realization and indeed faith are natural actions for Brahmins. Valor, bravery, perseverance, dexterity, willingness to fight, generosity and capacity to rule are natural actions for Kshatriyas. Agriculture, preservation of cattle and trade are natural actions for Vaishyas. Servitude is natural action for Shudras. A man who faithfully follows his indicated course of action attains liberation. Listen to how liberation is obtained by following one's indicated course of action. Through his own action, man obtains liberation by worshipping him who is the origin of beings and their endeavour, and him who pervade all this. Even when performed imperfectly, Swadharma is superior to someone else's dharma, performed well. Sin does not result if one's natural action is undertaken. O Kantya, natural action should not be discarded, even if it is tainted. Because all action is tainted, just as fire is shrouded by smoke. He who is detached everywhere has conquered his Atma, has overcome desire through sannyasa, attains the supreme liberation of freedom from action. O Kantya, learn briefly from me how one who has attained liberation attains the Brahman, that is the supreme form of knowledge, united with pure intellect, controlling the Atma with perseverance, discarding objects like sound and renouncing love and aversion, inhabiting a secluded place, eating little, restraining speech, body and the mind, constantly practicing meditation, seeking refuge in renouncement, discarding ego, power, insolence, desire, anger and possessions. Tranquil and without ego, he is fit for merging with the Brahman. Tranquil in merging with the Brahman, such a person does not sorrow and does not desire. Looking upon every being equally, he attains supreme devotion towards me. Through devotion, he comprehends my true nature, who I am and my different forms. Then, after knowing my true nature, enters. Seeking refuge in me, he always performs all action and through my blessings attains the eternal and indestructible abode. Through the mind offering up all action to me, devoted to me and seeking refuge in Buddhi Yoga, always immerse your mind in me. With mind immersed in me, with my blessings, you will overcome all difficulties. But if through a sense of ego, you don't listen to me, you will be destroyed. Through a sense of ego, you are thinking that you will not fight. But this resolution is false. Nature will compel you. O oh, Kantya, whatever you don't wish to do because of delusion, you will have to undertake in spite of that because you are tied down by your natural duty. O oh, Arjun, the Lord is established in the hearts of all beings and through Maya makes all beings whirl as if they are mounted on machines. O oh, descendant of the Bharata lineage, 
in every way seek refuge in him alone through his blessings you will attain supreme tranquility and the eternal abode i have explained to you this knowledge which is the most secret to false secrets having examined it completely do what you wish to do listen yet again to my supreme words the most secret of all secrets you are my dearly beloved therefore i am telling you what is good for you immerse your mind only in me be devoted to me worship me bow in obeisance before me i am pledging that you will attain me because you are my beloved discard all dharmas and seek refuge only in me i will free you from all sins do not sorrow you should not state this to those who do not meditate or are devoid of devotion or do not wish to hear nor to those who show me disrespect there is no doubt that he who explains this most secret knowledge to my devotees displays supreme devotion towards me and will attain me alone among men there is no one who does greater service to me in the world there is no one and there will be no one more dear to me and he who will study this dialogue of ours on dharma my view is that he will worship me through gyana yoga the man who only listens with faith and without disrespect he too will be freed from sin and attain the worlds attained by those who are pure of deeds o parth have you listened to this with single minded concentration o dhananje has your delusion of ignorance been destroyed arjun said o oh, achyut through your blessings my delusion has been destroyed i have obtained knowledge about what should be done and what shouldn't be done i am steady i no longer suffer from doubt i will do what you instruct sanjay said i have thus heard this wonderful and thrilling dialogue between the great souls vasudev and parth through the blessings of vyas i have heard the supreme and secret yog directly from krishna the lord of all yog when he stated it o king remembering again and again this sacred and wonderful dialogue between keshav and arjun i have repeatedly been exhilarated o king remembering that extremely wonderful universal form of hari i am greatly amazed and repeatedly exhilarated wherever there is krishna the lord of yog and arjun the wielder of the bow exist prosperity victory increase in wealth and sound policy that is my conviction